All right, so we're talking about learning to cut left and right. Um, you know, you're going to come across different coaches, different have different views. Uh, I've been teaching since 1989, close to 30,000 clients uh, in the water in that time. I've seen the results that uh, have come with uh, some of the things that we've worked on. Um, and the first thing is paddling into your own wave and learning how to cut left and right. Okay, so that's our overall goal, to get to that point so we can become those the artists that we want on a surfboard. Well, it all starts first, having knowledge, is the wave going to be a right or a left, okay? So if I'm in the ocean, I'm looking out to the horizon. From a beginner standpoint, remember, experienced surfers have a totally different thing going on. Once you get to this certain level, it becomes so easy to see wave shape and everything. Beginners have a struggle with the understanding what we are doing from an experience standpoint. And to try to teach people to see what we see isn't the easiest thing. So first off, I'm looking out, there's an imaginary line out to the horizon. I'm seeing the wave bigger on this side of that line or on this side of the line. When I'm looking out, if I see it on this side, I'm going to turn toward the wave so I can keep my eye on it. When I turn and start paddling into the wave, I'm going to follow it up over the bigger side for two reasons, like I've always tried to get this information as etiquette. Anyone who's on this side coming this way has the right of way. So you don't want to cut off another surfer. Um, it's how stuff happens. So it's etiquette is surfer on the closest to the curl has a right of way to go in the direction that they want. So if the wave's bigger on this side, that means the wave's getting smaller on this side and that's the direction we want to go. If we take off and I go left on that as a beginner i'm running in the, into the avalanche basically we don't want to run into the avalanche we want to look over that shoulder see that it's coming up it helps us gauge our paddling speed it helps us understand that once the wave gets us starts pushing us our head's going to go in the direction we want to ride we want to be inspired by that so the surfboard has to take off straight down like this as it's pushing, we are putting pressure on this rail and back in here, driving that rail around as we are paddling down the wave a little bit. We go too far down, the nose is gonna catch, okay? So what we're trying to do is learn how to distribute the weight, get that board from this vertical standpoint to turning and flattening out a little bit. It's gonna make it a lot easier to go to your feet. So if I'm on this board, and I want to go, let's say, let's say I want to go left. Okay. First off, body position on the board. Okay. Middle of the board goes between your belly button and chest. Give or take one inch upper back, depending on your weight distribution as a surfer, you might be bigger in your upper body or bigger in your lower body. So you are going to change a little bit of position based off of that. The key is keeping your feet together. My feet have to stay together. If my feet go out like this, I'm going to disrupt the tail of the surfboard. That means when my feet are out, the wave starts pushing me, the tail's going to lift quite a bit. I'm gonna lose control, and I'm probably going to nosedive if that happens. I see it all the time. People nosedive a couple times, and they did it because their feet were way out here, so they end up moving back on the board. Now they're not even in the right place on the board, to catch a wave and go to their feet properly to even have that availability to cut left or right. So it all starts with technique staying down the middle of the board. When I go to get up, if I'm looking over my right side and I see the waves bigger on this side of me, I know I wanna ride this way. So I look, no other surfers are on the wave. So as I'm paddling, as I feel I'm catching the wave, I'm putting in pressure and getting that rail to go 10 to 15% in the direction I want to go. You have fins on the surfboard. The board's going to hold in, and Mother Nature is going to put pressure on that fin a little bit more, so you're going to even get a little more percentage, but you have to commit to the lean. So when I come up going left, I have this pressure on this side. Way bigger, I paddled, I reached, 
I'm leaning. I'm getting the board now. I've caught the wave. I want to go into it and to the left. So I look where I want to go. And when I come up, my pressure's staying on my left side. Now when I sweep through, I'm staying down the middle. Look at my hand position. It's even. It's not like this. If I do this, I'm rolling a hip. It's gonna make it really hard, okay? Experienced surfers can get away with doing a lot of stuff. Look at Bethany Hamilton, one arm, and this girl takes off left, right on the biggest, gnarliest waves you can think of. So when you have experience, you can get away with certain other things. But as a beginner, to get started, if you can't read the wave properly, it's gonna be really hard to get your hands in the right position to even cut left or right. Now, if you're on a like, point break and the waves are really soft, you could probably get away with a little bit of air. But going into a wave, technically, means good timing and good positioning with your technique and going up to your feet. So my pressure's on the left side as I'm going up when I wanna cut left. I get that lean, I get a little bit of direction going. When I come up and I shoot through, my pressure stays on this rail so I can hug the face of the wave. Once the board comes around, I'm trying to create flow. So flow, if you're going front side, is pressure on this rail, extend. When I extend, this rail cuts and then falls back down a little bit. Now if I extend and I don't extend this body like this and come back down, my rail's gonna stay in and I'm gonna run into the face of the wave. So surfing is basically up the wave, down the wave, up the wave, down the wave. You have to go toe pressure, balance. Balance, I mean, by letting the pressure off your toes kind of go away for a second. So you have to find this skateboarding like rhythm. And I see it. Hey, we all skateboarded as kids and that's how we learn to generate speed on a wave. So skateboarding is definitely a very helpful thing to learn how to use your body correctly. So from here, I extend. As I extend, that board comes around. Now I go back low. Now I'm centered. Now I touch again, I extend. That is how we're gonna increase our speed. The next place that we have to think about when we do do that is when I wanna like turn the board and carve back the other way. Well, you have to learn how to do this. See this foot, back foot? It has to step back on the tail. So I go up to the, near the top of the wave, I step back and I like redirect. My body's forward, my legs, my weight's on the back leg and I turn, okay? So it's up to the top of the wave, down, up, create speed, go to the top of the wave to do a turn, step back, shift your weight back and turn, okay? Turning off the top of the wave, depending on the kind of turn you wanna do, it's either a snap, which is a shove into the top of the wave, that's you know, your more aggressive shortboard style, or you are going to step back and carve. The fun part about surfing is cutting left or right on the wave. That's your overall goal, is to be able to go out, catch a wave and cut left or right. Once that happens, you're opening up a whole new fun part of learning to surf, and you become the artist on the wave. But you have to learn how to paddle into the wave with good timing. You have to always watch over your shoulder. Follow that wave up. Don't see the wave come in. And if it's 15 feet back there, don't turn and just start looking at the beach and paddling. See where it's coming up. You're on a big board as a beginner for the reasons of paddling glide. Uh, you can build speed easier. You're just gliding over the ocean. You're not trying to be sporadic and the more you start throwing your arms around and moving them crazy the better chance your body's already changing as it's on the board and you're gonna do things that you don't want to do you're going to uh, have your feet go out your hands are gonna go to the wrong spot when you go to get up and I'm telling you right now the key to catching a wave and cutting right and left is technique with your hands and keeping your feet together you can time the wave properly and go into a wave and lean Take a couple paddles with that lean. Get those hands here, looking where you wanna go and going up, you're gonna have success. If you aren't doing these things, you're gonna struggle being consistent. You might get it once, you might get lucky, uh, but you don't wanna rely on luck. 
you want to have knowledge. You want to look over this side, go, okay, the weight's bigger on here. I watch it, it starts pushing me. Now I take that big deep breath. Right before the wave gets to tell the board, you're lifting your head to clear the nose. Take that big deep breath. And then as you lower that chin and you're breathing out and reaching, you're leaning when you feel you caught the wave. So you're not leaning until you feel you're catching the wave a little bit. Glide speed is so important. When I'm paddling and the wave's back here and the wave gets to me and I breathe out, once I feel I'm going down the wave and I take a couple paddles with a lean, I can get my hands in here because I built glide speed. The shorter the board, you're not gonna have that luck to be able to do that. So you're gonna rely on everything being very spontaneous and very quick. So the bigger boards create glide. So if I'm on a big board, I take five paddles and I stop paddling, the board's still moving. If I'm on a short board, I take five paddles and I quit, I'm gonna stop almost. That's the difference. So it's about the board continuing its momentum forward to be able to get into that wave. And that's why it's easier to ride bigger boards and that's why beginners should start on bigger boards. You have to develop good timing, good technique, and build from there. If you wanna go into shortboarding, that's gonna take you know some time. It's gonna take a lot of hours in the water, uh, watching videos. Nowadays, we get videos. We can like dissect stuff so easy. Back when I was learning to surf, we just had to do it. We had to watch the better surfers and just try to pick up who was doing the right things and who looked good on a wave. So style is so important. Understand, style starts with your hands. If my finger is up like this and I'm pumping down the line, as a goofy foot, this is gonna be relatively pretty decent style. If my hand drops like that and I start doing that, I'm gonna lose style. So style starts with your hands and being flexible, learning how to flow. So anyway, uh, if you have any questions, um, I'm definitely uh, up to answering questions if you have any, but learning how to take off, cut right, cut left, it all starts with paddling into the wave, looking at finding the right timing with the wave, once the wave's pushing you and you feel you're catching it, lean and take a couple paddles with that reach. Your paddling has gears. First gear is doggy paddle, second gear is reaching further, third gear is deep breath, breathing out with your chin out so you can see. Lean, get that red edge of the board, rail going, and keep that pressure applied until you're cutting across the wave and then you're gonna start pumping, okay? so. Anyway, uh, hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to DM me um, or text, whatever. And, um, and I can maybe break things down a little easier. Uh, but this video is just, you know, understanding how do we get cutting across. It starts with having good wave knowledge and knowing to watch the wave until it gets to you, then applying the lean in the right direction. Okay, so uh, the more knowledge, but right equipment, all this stuff kind of gives you that relaxation. The more relaxed you are going into a wave, that doesn't mean paddle slowly. It doesn't mean don't put in effort. It means staying calm and cool and take off with confidence, okay? So knowledge definitely, knowledge and technique are gonna build confidence. And uh, surfing's a lot of trial and error. It's like, I mean, you know, Kobe, Michael Jordan, they ate curry, I mean, they miss how many shots? They've been doing this ever since they were little kids. They still miss shots. So don't think that you're not gonna fail trying to get to the next level, you know? So it's trial and error. And uh, it's how you push through and how you embrace those errors and learn from them. So anyway, uh, hope it helps guys. And happy Labor Day weekend. Frank Corona with Natural Surf Technique. Take care guys.